So we need to go on to some new details we haven't learned yet. Again, I'm this is a way of representing equilibrium system in, in symbolic general form. And so the capital letters, the uppercase letters, are representing chemical species. So in our previous example, the A might have been water, the B would have been carbon monoxide, the C would have been H2 gas, and the D would have been carbon dioxide gas. Then the small or lowercase letters, A, B, C, and D, um, are the coefficients in the balanced equation. You know how we'll have numbers written out in front of the chemical species. So in our previous example, the coefficient was 1 for a small a for H2O would have been 1, small b for CO would have been 1, small c for H2 would have been 1, and also small d for CO2 would have been 1. Okay, so the small letters are coefficients, the large letters are the chemical species. And uh, when we we have written these before, but here's here's an example at the bottom of the screen of an equilibrium constant expression. Remember, we've done these before with weak acids and weak bases. When we did them with weak acids and weak bases, we again had a capital K, but we put an A if we were talking about an acid, or a B if we were talking about a base. But here's for an equilibrium in general. We'll give it a KEQ. That's the equilibrium constant and then here's its expression it's a math ratio of products C and D over reactants A and B now notice here's a detail we've not covered before which is that you put the chemical species you're talking about inside brackets and remember the brackets represent what they represent molarities or molar concentrations how many moles per liter there there are for that chemical species. Well, okay, so in our previous example, C we said was H2 gas, okay? So we would be putting H2 in this bracket here, and our C, our exponent, our small c, which is an exponent that was the uh, coefficient in the balanced equation, it became an exponent in our equilibrium constant expression. That one for our previous example would have been 1, right? Our coefficient was 1, so we, our KEQ has an exponent of 1 on H2 gas. And likewise, D would be CO2, the capital D would be CO2, we would be talking about its molar concentration because of the brackets. And the uppercase D, the lowercase D, that's an exponent here, is again the coefficient on carbon dioxide, which was a one, and so uh, all our all our ex exponents here for our previous example would have been one. All our exponents would have been one. Now, notice if we were writing that uh, KEQ for this previous example, we would get to put water in in the denominator as a reactant, and we haven't done that with our S's and bases. But the reason we get to this time is because it's in the gas phase. And it turns out that we've, as we've remarked before, you can only include in one of these equilibrium constant expressions down here, you can only include things that are chemical species that are in the aqueous phase or the gas phase. And that's because those are the two phases that actually change concentration. Gases can be compressed or expanded. And things that dissolve into water can dissolve to a greater degree or a lesser degree. And so you can have different changing concentrations. All right. So in this case, since A was water in the gas phase, and that and then gas can change concentration, we do include it in our KEQ for water. Okay, here we go. That's what we just said, right? Now, here, let's try a different example. Here we've got four ammonia, ammonia molecules reacting with seven molecules of oxygen gas to produce four nit nitrogen dioxide gas molecules and six water uh, gas molecules, steam molecules. Okay, so water molecules in the steam phase. So we're going to put, how are we going to write our KEQ for that equilibrium system? We're going to put products over reactants and um, raise them to the exponents, to the powers that are their coefficients. Okay, so we had water there in the, in the brackets with 6 for its exponent because 6 was its coefficient in the balanced equation. We have nitrogen dioxide gas in the brackets with 4 for its exponent because 4 was its 
coefficient in the balanced equation, and likewise for ammonia, it's got a 4 for an exponent because of its coefficient was 4 in the balanced equation, and oxygen gas has a 7 for an exponent because 7 was its coefficient in the balanced equation. All right, let's try again. Here's hydrogen gas reacting with fluor fluoride, fluorine gas, sorry, and uh, that's going to produce two uh, hydrogen fluoride or hydrofluoric acid gas molecules. I want to remark just for a second as a review uh, that, of course, this is an acid, hydro hydrofluoric acid. And I want to point out, you, you may already know that hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, and hydroiodic acid, that's HCl, HBr, and HI, that they were strong acids. But it turns out, even though you this fluorine is in the same chemical group as chlorine, bromine, and iodine. It turns out that hydrogen fluoride or hydrofluoric acid is not a strong acid. Remember when we say strong, that means that it completely dissociates uh, and gives up its H plus in this case. Well, H hydrogen fluoride or hydrofluoric acid does not do that, and yet it's terribly dangerous stuff and can't be stored in glass because it eats through glass. So you have to store it in this special kind of rubber plastic that they've developed that it can't effectively attack its way through. All right, that was a side note, just referring, just I want it to be in your mind. I want to place it in your mind, the hydrofluoric acid, even though you'd think so, it's actually not a strong acid. It doesn't completely dissociate uh, in water solution. Okay, but now our topic right now is equilibrium constant expressions, and so how would we write that? Well, we'd put products over reactants, so we're going to have brackets HF with a 2 for an exponent, and then on the bottom in the numerator, we're going to have brackets H2 and brackets F2 for molar concentrations, those two things. There we go.